Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel of Devnis Mathematics Desk. So as you can see, it's class 8's video today. And it's data handling part 2. So it was, I think, a non-smooth part 1 for all of you. I know that. Thanks to my pens. But uh, I think that you will not face that problem anymore. So I gave the shopkeeper scolding. Stop giving me stupid pens. Give me something good. So that I can means provide good content to my viewers so he gave me something good i hope so this is the data handling part two so it's actually you can say i told you that part one as it's not fully completed so we will just means go through the rest of the topics of part one in part two and also additionally we will also learn about bar graph today okay so basically today we will learn about the uses of frequency tally table through class intervals and formation of bar graphs. So bar graph is another type of frequency distribution method. So it has means bar graph is like this. Okay, it's like this. Both these are called axis. This is the x axis, this is the y axis. On the x axis, whatever you have the means data that is written and the quantities of the data are written in the y axis. I will explain how it's done. But first of all, let us complete the unfinished frequency distribution topics. So you have learned what is the frequency distribution table consisting of these three. Data, tally, frequency. Frequency is the number of times one single data is being used. Tally is writing frequency using sticks. I told you that how to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 sticks. To write 5, do like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, cut from middle. It is 5. Then suppose you have 7, then 5 plus 2, 8, then 5 plus 3, 9, 5 plus 4, 10, 5, then another 5. Okay. Like that, you have to write free tally as well. So we did those for the normal numbers. Now you will have class intervals. So what are class intervals? It's a range of values. So suppose I am giving you values starting from 1 and suppose many type of numbers are there. 1, 2, 2.3, 2.4 and like this it goes up to 100 suppose. And continuously many numbers are there. So 82 to 85 numbers are there. Then what will you do? Suppose uh, then will you write each number once in the data column? No. What you can do is then take numbers in range. Suppose 1 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to uh, 60, um, 60 to 80, and 80 to 100. In these ranges, you can check how many numbers are there. So that makes your data column reduced. It doesn't mean exert on you the burden to write the data separately it can be many data then if you write them separately that's the use of intervals but what you have to do for you are considering a class interval you can include the lower limit of the class interval but you can't include this upper limit of the class interval okay um suppose i have values of 5 10 15 20 1 25 30 then i am asked how many numbers are there in the range 1 to 20? Then I can include 1, but I can't include this upper limit 20, okay? Then how many numbers will be there? 1, 5, 10, 15, so 4. Then it's frequency f equal to 4. Tally t equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Like that. Then suppose uh, in the range, suppose another few numbers are there. 37, 39, 40. And you tell me how many numbers are there in the range 20 to 40? Now what we can do, we can take this 20, you include this 20, but we can't include 40. The upper limit can't be included, that's the main principle. Then see, 20, 25, 30, 37, 39, 5 numbers are there in the range 20 to 40. Can't include 40, remember that. So here f equal to 5. Then tally equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, middle cut it down 5. Like that, you can do the tally or frequency for each of the ranges or class intervals. But in each of the cases, you cannot include the upper class limit. 
this is a class interval in the left hand side one is called a lower class limit and this up means right hand side one of this dash is called the upper side limit it is denotes lower side limit to lower limit to upper limit that's the class interval you can include the lower limit but you can't include the upper limit while calculating the values in that class interval okay and always remember one thing the range or the width of a class interval okay should always be same so see in each of these classes what is the what is the width of the class intervals so here i have one small thing okay i'm just for my convenience now see to calculate the range of a class interval you have to do upper limit minus lower limit then do for this 120 minus 0 equal to 20 this one 40 minus 20 equal to 20 this one 60 minus 40 equal to 20 this one 80 minus 60 equal to 20 100 minus 80 equal to 20 so whenever you are doing class intervals all the ranges of the class intervals should be same okay remember that and so now let's put this understanding into real uses in some questions the ones we couldn't finish on the previous video for class 8 of frequency distribution table so let's begin then bar graph is coming into the game so then i have been given some numbers so uh, like this a uh, 3 1 2 5 4 3 2 5 5 4 phone number or what um 2 2 2 1 4 1 4 5 4 1 4 1 5 now I have to frame a so I am writing empty table okay don't consider it as fixed deposit table it is frequency distribution table okay frequency distribution table you have to frame for these numbers first of all write them uh, in ascending order okay and see yeah, but ascending order AO I am writing so one is the first number so the smallest one how many times one has been used one two three times so to write one three times then 2 is the next number, 2 has been used how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times. So, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Then 3 is the next number. How many times? 1, 2, 2 times. Only 2 times? Yeah. Oh. Then 4, 4 is being used how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So, 4 times I have to write 4. Then 5. 5 is being used 1 time, 2 times, 3 times, uh, 4 times. Write 5, 4 times. Now, in both of the cases, check how many numbers are there. Here, how many numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 3, 18 numbers. Here also 3, 5, 8, 8, 2, 10, 4, 14, 4, 18 numbers. So, this is the correct ascending order. Now, what, what are your respective datas? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are the respective numbers used. So data will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Frequency. How many times 1 has been used? 3 times. So 1's frequency is 3. How many times 2 has been used? 5 times. So 2's frequency is 5. 3 has been used 2 times. 2 frequency. Frequency the number of times uh, data has been used. Okay. 4 is being used 4 times. Frequency 4. 5 is being used 4 times. 5 frequency 4. Now rules of writing tally. 3 frequency, 3 sticks. 5 frequency, 1, 2, 3, 4. From middle, cut it down, 5. 2 frequency, 2 sticks. 4 frequency, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 sticks. Again, 4 frequency, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 sticks. Wow. Easy. So, what we did? We first of all checked from the smallest to the largest, what were the numbers. And for how many times each were used, we wrote them that many times. Then, here how many numbers and here how many numbers, just check it once. If it's same, then the ascending order is correct. Now then see, for data, what are the respective numbers used? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 have been used. So write them in the data column. Then for frequency, 1 is being used 3 times, 2, 5 times, 3, 2 times, 4, 4 times, 5, 4 times. That's the respective frequencies. Tally writing rules, you know that. For numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, only the number of sticks. For 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, from middle, cut it down, 5. That's it. That's the frequency distribution table for these numbers. It's easy if you know the process. Let's see the next one. Uh, some more sums I have on every table. Not fixed deposit table. It's frequency distribution table. 
Now, uh, the question is like this. These are the 30 marks of a student. Third or the 30 students marks. Suppose uh, they gave an exam, okay? 30 students gave an exam. These are the respective marks given which they got. We have to frame a frequency distribution table for that. Let's do it. So also we have been given some things. I will tell you. Now class interval usage is coming to play. 15, 20. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry. But these are the marks first of all. 15, 20, 8, 9, 10. 16, 17, 20, 24, 30. I don't know what were the maximum marks. Then 44, 47, 38, 36, 40. Many numbers there. 30 students marks. These are. Um, then 27, 25, 28, 30, 19. Huh. Um, 7, 11, 21, 31, 41. Wow, what a good pattern. 11, 21, 31, 41. Then 37, 47. Now some good numbers. Good students. 23, 20, 17. Okay. So these are the marks that 30 students have got in an exam. Now we have been given some class intervals. What are they? 0 to 10. Uh, 10 to 20. 20 to 30. I'll explain how to do it. 30 to 40, 40 to 50. Draw. Frequency distribution table. I am writing as empty table. Okay. So. Now see, I told you class intervals are a range of values. So they are giving us some range of marks. So these class intervals will be our data column. Because these are the means range of marks they have given to us so whatever class intervals they are giving to you those are your data columns so first of all fill up that okay done with this now then in the range of 0 to 10 so when you are considering for 0 to 10, you can't include this upper limit 10. So including 0 and up to 9, I can consider the numbers. Okay. Then from 0 to 10, which marks are there? 8 is 1 between 0 to 10. 9 is 1 between 0 to 10. 10 can't be included. The upper limit can't be included. Okay. Uh, here, no case. No, no, no. Uh, only two numbers. Seriously. So good students left us alone with two values only. Very funny. Uh, okay, yes, seven is there. Seven is one between zero to ten. I'm just checking. Okay, guys. Uh, okay. Yes. So these are the values between zero to ten. The thing is, what you can't include ten. Okay, the upper limit of any class interval can't be included. Okay. So you can't include ten in this. Class interval 20 in this class interval, 13 this class interval, 14 this one, and 15 this one. Okay. Then between 0 to 10, how many numbers are there? Excluding 10. 1, 2, 3 numbers. So then frequency is what? 3. Now 10 to 20. Now you can include 10, but you can't include 20. Then the numbers between 10 to 20 are what? Uh, 15 is 1. Okay. Then 10 is 1. So I am putting cross for this range 10 to 20. 15 is 1. Um, then 10 is 1. 10 can be included. Then what is there? 16 is another one can be included between 10 to 20. 17 can also be included. 
20 can't be included. The upper limit can't be included. No, no, nothing. Uh, yes, 19 is one number between 10 to 20 can be included. 11 is one number between 10 to 20 can be included. No one here. Huh, no. 17 is one number between 10 to 20 can be included. So then, excluding the upper limit 20, how many numbers are there between 10 to 20? Including 10. 1, 2, how many crosses are there? Just check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just checking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. Okay. So frequency is 7, obviously. Now, for the range 20 to 30. Now, you can't include 30, but you can 20 and all the numbers between 20 to 30. Okay, let's do them. So, excluding 30, the numbers between 20 to 30, including 20. So, 20 can be including, putting circle for this range. 20 is there. Uh, another 20 is there. 24 is also between 20 to 30, can be included. 30 can't be included. Upper limit can't be included. Uh, 44, 47, 36, 40, no, no. 27 is a number between 20 to 30, can be included. 25 also between 20 to 30, can be included. 28 also between 20 to 30, can be included. 30, the upper limit, can be included. 21 is a number between 20 to 30, can be included. No, these two can't be. 23 is a number between 20 to 30, can be included. 20, the lower limit, can be included. So then, the numbers between 20 to 30, including 20 and excluding the upper limit 30. How many circles I have drawn? Circles will signify the numbers between 20 to 30. Okay. For the range. How many circles are there? Just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So frequency is 9. Now for 30 to 40. Now you can't include 40, but you can include 30 and the numbers between 30 to 40. Okay. So starting, now I am putting a uh, square for the numbers. So I can include 30, the lower limit can be included. Lower limit of this range. Now you can tell us that you are including 30. You can tell that why can't, are you into including 30 in this one, 20 to 30. This upper limit, the right hand, right hand side number of the dash can't be included. Okay. So here the number on the right hand side of the, this dash is 40 so i can't include 40 okay so one square 30 can be there 38 is also number 36 is also there 40 can be there upper limit can't be done 30 again lower limit including um, 31 can also be there 41 not possible 37 can be done 47 can be done okay then now see so between 30 to 40, excluding 40, including 30 and the numbers between them. How many squares have I drawn? That's the range of numbers. 1 square, 2 square, 3 squares, 4 squares, 5 squares, 6 squares. Frequency is 6. Now, 40 to 50. So that's the last range. So now... When you are considering the last class interval, you, have, you can include both the lower limit and the upper limit. For the last class interval of your data column, you can include both the lower and upper limit. You have to actually, not can, have to. So let's do. Then the remaining numbers will be the parts only, okay. So 44 is a number between 40 and 50, 47 also. 40 can be included. No one is here. 41 can be included. 47 can be included. How many darkened circles are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. Now, so here 30 students' marks are there. First of all, check what is your total frequency. Okay, yes. 3, 7, 10, 9, 19, 6, 25, 5, 30. So frequency is 30, therefore this, here also 30 frequency, that's okay. Now, tally formation rules, 3 stick, 3 numbers, 3 sticks. 7, first of all draw 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 2, 9, then draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 4, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are the respective tallies and that's the frequency distribution table for this set of numbers, okay.
so you understand how it's done for in the data column your class intervals are your data columns for every class interval you cannot include the upper limit while calculating the values within the range you can include the lower limit but for the last class interval of your data column you have to include both the lower limit and the upper limit that's the rule then your frequency will be of the class interval how many numbers are there in the class interval that's your frequency okay and then tally formation rules you know that that's it this is all about frequency distribution table which consists of data tally and frequency data is the set of values it can be respective numbers when there is a means less amount of respective numbers but when here suppose many scattered numbers are there then we take them in regular ranges which are called class intervals remember the width of every class interval which is upper limit minus lower limit should be always same for all the class intervals given and while calculating values for the frequency of a class interval you can't include the upper limit but at the last class interval you can include the upper limit you cannot you have to include it and the lower limit as well so those are the rules for fd table or frequency distribution table now what else was there i told you in the previous video another thing we will come across already at the start of the video i also told you bar graph a very interesting topic that now we are getting into so bar graph uh, has a means very simple means strategy of means formation so let me explain you how to do it first of all let us draw this fd table whatever so what i was about to do in part 1 actually it came to end in part 2 in the middle quite fine bar graph um so you can have uh, many cases like this suppose uh, you have given an exam of five subjects english math science social studies and another any subject let me just write a bengali suppose english or hindi math science social studies hindi okay and out of 100 you got these marks suppose oh yeah what i want to be suppose you got 87 in maths you got 92 suppose in science you got 100 in social science you got 59 suppose and in hindi you got uh, 73 Let it be. Some numbers out of hundred. These numbers you have got. Suppose in your annual examination of class eight, um, five subjects exams you gave and you got these numbers. So this type of data can be drawn using a bar graph. How bar graph is in this way? It has two axes. It's like a right angle. Both axes can stretch up to infinity. This. vertical axis is called the y axis this horizontal axis is called the x axis on the x axis we write our respective data so what is our data here data is the subjects exam you are given right so here i can just write the data respectively i am in short form writing them okay math this was sci science social studies ss uh, hindi these are our data so x axis is for our data and for y axis is the scale of writing the values okay so this is a type of frequency you have got 87 87 is your frequency out of 100 in english so for writing the frequency our y axis is there so how can we write the frequency in y axis you have to means start from zero both of this axis start from zero okay zero sorry here it doesn't start from zero whatever you are learning now it's basics of bar graph okay so on the x axis just remember for now you have to write the whatever we can say the data values and in the y axis what you have to do write its frequency how from y axis you start with zero on a certain limit you have to mean see here up to 100 you can maximum get the marks okay so what you can do 
draw 10 small subdivision 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then suppose here 10 is there okay 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 then here 20 is there okay like this, the marks or the means respective frequency that written in the y axis. Okay. So let me just try to extend it. So I am not means writing these subversions, the subdivisions. I am just means imaginarily I am drawing the axis over here. Suppose here 10 is there, here 20 is there, 30, 40. I have to draw the numbers right, uh, write the numbers 60, 70, 80, 90, and here you get 100. Okay, o always means when you are finishing the y axis values, scratch the axis a little bit more so that your last limit is not the end of your axis like that. This is y, this is x. Now, how can you write the values? So, in English, you got 87. So, here it is 80 and here 90. Somewhere around here, you have got it. And this is English. So, like this. Uh, my drawing might be not accurate. This is the bar. That's why it's called a bar graph. It's like a bar, but the Means this top of the bar is the marks you have got, means the frequency, and this bar where <coughs> it's drawn in the line of English on the x axis at English it is drawn. See, you can understand on the bar only at English you have got up to uh, okay, but how much did I got here? About 87. Yes, so 80, then up to here. So up to 87, on English you got up to 87. It's like means, have you seen that game on a, means you have a meter and you have, if you have a, suppose bell, you strike it with a hammer, a ball goes up on the meter up to some level. So for that force you are applying, you are means reaching up to some score. So like that here only, for the exams you have given, on English you have got up to 87 marks. And similarly for math, you have got 92. So on math up to 92, so I'm on, somewhere here, so on math 92, this denotes what, on math on x axis you have got up to 92 marks on the y axis, so y axis for values, x axis for the data, science you got a clean sweep, 100 marks, so up to 100 on science like this the rest of the graphs so this one is 59 somewhere around here actually you can do using original graphs you will be asked to do using original graphs okay so you when you see the graph you see that you can draw y axis on one side and there the subdivisions are already given so you can directly from there frame these divisions and as imaginarily drawing the graph here so it's not a scientific, use a normal graph. I can't use the space the graph here and do it. Okay, it will not seem that magnified for you. And in Hindi 73, uh, somewhere around here. Just understand the concept, okay. So this is your bar graph. Yes, I know it's not that means accurate. The drawing is not accurate, I know. But that's the concept. What is the concept? On the x-axis you means write down your data. Okay, which are your subjects here. And on the y-axis, the frequency or the scoring it, it, it's like a score, right? On the y-axis. How? By regular divisions. Okay. Then you can just see your data is suppose English. So up to on y-axis up to what frequency I've got that? 87. So up to 87 draw it. That's how you have to do bar graph. Okay, now you will see real sums on these, okay. I will try to draw the bar graph more in a clean and clear cut way. Let's begin. So, here what is given to us, what you know, I am telling. Question 3. So, 
this is a list of routes used by students for going to school okay means students can go by various ways right so some students use bus some use car rickshaw some use bicycle some use another method so how is it given uh, so the met modes are mode of transport okay mode of transport i'm writing as mot and strength strength is what number of students using it this can be actually frequency i'm writing as slash f so more transports are bus car rickshaw walking method i don't like so not walking bicycle and uh, yes the last walk is the walking so how many are uh, use bus as a method 32 car is used by 16 rickshaw is used by 24 bicycle by 20 students and walking is done by only 8 students understand when who likes to walk to school so painful for the legs not joking here you have to do a bar graph okay the heading is bar graph as you can see so for this data you have to do a bar graph So see the mode of transport the students are using. Those are our data, and the strength or the number of students availing those transport modes. That's our respective frequencies. So let's draw the bar graph. How does it look like? Uh, like this. Y axis. I'm drawing a bigger one. The x axis. X and y. so x axis is for our data data is the mode of transport so it is here bus okay then car is there rickshaw is there bicycle is there and walking is also there horrible method now for the y axis uh, this is our strength of the students or the frequency vertical line so starting from 0 here see its the lowest number is 8 and its the largest number is 32 so i can go on division from 5 right how let me just say tell you here it is 0 suppose then here it is 5 here it is 10 here it is 50 on the graph you will have this subdivision smart here you have 20 Here we have twenty-five, thirty. Oh man, I just increase this a bit too much. Ah, uh, so here suppose another one is. So here five, then here suppose ten, here fifteen, here twenty, here twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Let it be the last limit. So this is the word. This is the uh, means graph of strength of the students. Means now see the first mode of transport is bus. Bus is being used by thirty-two students. So the strength thirty-two, the frequency thirty-two on y-axis is where thirty. Then this is thirty-five. So in the middle somewhere like this. So for bus. Bus. This is for bus. That is bus. So for bus up to thirty two. That's that's how you have to do the means marking. Car used by only sixteen people, sixteen students. So on car this is fifteen. So just start at fifteen. Ah, uh, somewhere here. Fifteen so is sixteen. All right. So for car that's the required students. On car up to sixteen. Rickshaw twenty four people use it. So on rickshaw twenty four, so just less than twenty five, uh, somewhere here. Okay, 
So that's 24. Okay. Then bicycle is used by 20 people. Bicycle 20. So here it's 20, right? 20. Walking is done by eight people. Five, then here up to eight. Just like this. And that's the bar graph. That's your final answer. Okay. So you can specify the means the frequencies on top of the graphs as well. 32, 16, 24, 20, 8. You can write like that. Do you understand the way? The x axis is for the mode of transfer of data. Then y axis is for the number of students, the frequency. For the frequency, I have taken regular intervals of 5, okay, 5 and 10 and 50, multiples of 5, like that. Then I have, I have done bus up to 32, car up to 16, rickshaw up to 24, bicycle up to 20, walk up to 8. That's the required bar graph. That's how you have to do. Quite easy it is, okay. Let's see the next question. Again, the heading will be bar graph only. Just trying to rub this. Let me rub the blue graph. We will draw another graph. Some more data given to us. Okay. Now it's a bit easy, it will be easier for you to see how to this guy seeing one thing. Okay, question four. So here you have been given with six means only A B C D E F. A B C D E F. Okay, and for them some values have been given. This is no means Directly you can see data and frequency here 230, 400, 350, 200, 380, 160. Draw the bar graph for this, this given data. So just understand it, okay? It's like this. This is the way. it's done like this. So you given data to you. So for A uh, means it's no marks, no weight, nothing. For A frequency is 230, B is frequency is 400, C is 350, and like that as you can see on your screen. So first of all, let us draw the graph. Vertical axis, y axis, horizontal axis, x axis. Then, so x axis is for the data's data's here are a, b, c, d, e, f. Let's write a, b, c, d, e, and f. Okay. Y axis is for the frequency. Frequencies are given to us. So C starting with 160 and largest value is 400. So I can take on intervals of 50, right? So here starting with 0. Then here. 50, um, here 100, here 150, it's tough to draw actually, 200, 250, 300, 350, that was the largest value, 400, right, let me just increase this graph a little bit, 400 here, okay, I have taken on intervals of 50, you can see then this is 0 and ending up to 400 then for a the frequency is 230 a up to 230 200 then 220 somewhere here so like this for a to 230 it's like that for a up to this frequency given to you b is 400 directly the topmost pillar 400 So you are doing on the graph, no. You can just see here, suppose it is 370. So somewhere 
E suppose here, so for 370, draw a line up to this. See that the margin is means correct. Here 370, here you also have to means that is 370. So like this, draw the margin. Here it is 370. Then just draw the graph. Okay. Then C is frequency is 350. 350 is here. Uh, see, that's the means trouble. Here if I had a scale, I could have drawn like this. Uh, just like this, the dotted line as you can see. Okay. Then just draw up to for C up to 350. Thin graphs and bars I know. Then for D up to 200, D frequency is 200. Uh, I need a scale actually, but no need. D is 200. D up to 200. Then E frequency is 380. Uh, 350 here for somewhere in between this, right? So here suppose E frequency 380. At F frequency the lowest 160, 100, 150, just over it. 160 or somewhere here. Yes. Then this ride of values over then 230, 400. 350, 200, 380, um, then 160. And that's a required graph. So it's easy, just draw the data so on the x axis and the maintaining a regular range, the frequency is on the y axis. Then for the data on a axis, vertically draw up to the required frequency on the y axis. Keep going till, the, till you reach the last data. And on, at the end, on the top of the pillars, write the respective frequencies, okay? That's easy. Easy stuff. So this is bar graph. But, another type of case is here. Suppose, uh, I and another, my one, another friend, suppose, we both gave an exam. Okay. Suppose five subjects are there. In, means two of us get the five subjects, examinations each of each, okay? Then we got some marks in each of the subjects. So then how will it look like? So let's rub this heading bar graph. We are now heading into double bar graph. So let's see how. See this bar graph that you learned, okay? This is just the basics of bar graph, okay? X axis, Y axis. For X axis up to the required limit on the frequency up to y axis we learn more complicated and means detailed analysis of bar graphs and types as well in the upcoming classes we will just grow up a little bit more so coming to double bar graph suppose this case uh we suppose i and my suppose my friend okay And so this is what students, we, we both suppose get the exam. Then, then this is what was English, Math, Science. Suppose I got three subjects. Uh, suppose I got out of 50, 46, 47, 48. My friend got 49, 44, 46. So, here what you can see. So, for one data, we are having means two subdivisions, right? For the data English, there are two marks. One of me and one of my friends. So where this type of cases comes up, so see in the previous case you are having one data and one frequency. Now you are having one data and two frequencies. There the double bar graph comes into the game. Now see how I will do it. The graph for this will look like this. So our data are English, Maths and Science subjects. Okay. Then for both of us, 
So here I can take on ranges of suppose 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now I got 46 in English. So here somewhere 46 should be there. This 46 is my marks. Now for English, just beside that, my friend's marks is also 49. So here it will be 49. So, two bars of frequency for one single data. Just as you can see, that's how you have to do it. For the data English, both of our marks should be, or the both data's data should be side by side. Then suppose for maths, or 47. So here so 47 is there. Okay. And he or she got 44. Uh, somewhere around here. So this is his or her marks. My marks just beside his or her marks. Okay. Then science. Student, uh, sort of I, got 48 in science here. So here suppose this is the graph for me. And just beside that, my friend got 46 in science. So, just here, this is his or her marks. So, that's how you have to draw the double bar graphs. Now, to just make them look separate, for both of the datas, you can make the gra graphs or the bars look means differently. How? Suppose my graph is in blackish, okay, shaded, suppose, and the other student's graph is left means unshaded. That will differentiate them quite properly. You will not get confused. On top you can write I. And suppose you have other. I. Other. I. And other. This is just for denoting that whose graphs these are respectively. That's how you have to do double bar graph. So let's quickly see an example of double bar graph. Let's see how we can do it. This was a very small example that I just saw you. It was shown you actually. So now the heading will be double bar graph. So let's see. So I have means here a few items are being sold from two shops. Shop A and shop B. And for each of the items, the two shops have different prices. So, the items are a tea set, very good. Then, mixi, it is given, it is actually mixer grinder. Then, coffee maker. And finally, Dinner set. Okay. Good items provided by the shops. Now, shop A in rupees. The price of T set in shop A and shop B is also in rupees. In shop A, T set costs 900 rupees and in shop B, it costs 950 rupees. Now, Mixi in shop A costs 700 rupees, in shop B it costs 800 rupees. My god, shop B is means taking more money from the people, not fair. Again, coffee maker costs 600 in shop A and co coffee maker costs 700 in shop B. No one will buy anything from shop B. Poor shop maker, shopkeeper. Dinner set costs 600 in shop A. And finally, shop B. Let something out at a lesser price. Nusset at shop B cost you this 500. Jokes apart, this is the given data. Okay. So I'm just drawing a it like a table so that you can understand properly. Now it's okay. So this is a given table. Now we have to draw a double bar graph. As you can see, the heading is given directly. So what was this? Yes, question 5. So we have to draw a double bar graph for this given data. So our data is what? The x-axis data is our items. 
So let's draw the bar graph first. Double bar graph is a subdivision of bar graph only. Right. This is x. Let me just let me just extend it up to some large position here on y. So our uh, data are the items provided by the both shops. So T set is one. Another one is Mixi given to us. Another one is Coffee Maker. So I am writing it as CM, okay? But Chief Minister, don't get confused. And Dinner Set. Okay, these are our respective data. Now for the y axis, the frequency. So see in both of the cases, largest is 900, lowest is 500. So I can consider on limits of 100 the data, okay? The frequency, so 100. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and 900. Fine. Okay, that's our respective frequencies. Now, what is the price of T-set at shop A? 900 rupees. Very good. At shop A, the price of T-set is 900. What am I doing? Yes. Cost 900 at shop A. Okay. And at shop B, what is the cost of T set? 950. Okay, 950 is the largest actually. So I have to include 1000 here. Okay, 1000. So 950 will be somewhere here. So just beside it. And here on top of this pillar draw A and here draw B. What does that indicate? Price of T set at shop A it is going up to 900. Price of T set at shop B is going up to this bar 950. Then similarly do for the others. Then the next item is mix C. At shop A what is the price? 700. 700 here. This is the price at shop A. At shop B, how much does this cost? 800. At shop B, it is 800. Of the here. So, level it as A and B. Again, price of mixi at shop A. A, up to this it is going up 700. Price of mixi at shop B is going up to this 800. B, as you can see. Then CM, not Chief Minister, Coffee Maker. The price of Coffee Maker at shop A is 600. So up to 600, okay. Very good. And price of coffee maker at shop B is 700. Up to 700. Very well. Draw AB. Again, price of coffee maker at shop A, you can directly see 600. Price of coffee maker at shop B, you can directly see 700. See how double bar graph is so useful actually. Then finally comes the last member, dinner set, last data, last item. Price of it at shop A is 600. Here. Nice. And price of the dinner set at shop B is 500. So 500, so here. Then this is A, this is B. Then see, price of dinner set at shop A, if anyone asks you, from the graph you can say it is 600. Price of dinner at shop B you can say it is 500. And that's the required bar graph. So the data column remains constant for the receptive frequencies. Only one data column. The x-axis for the given data. The items here. Then for the means prices or the frequencies of both the other means categories. Frame a common frequency range. Like here I have taken as 100, then draw up to the max limit. So it's 1000, I can take as a max limit here because 950 is there. The lowest one is 500, so take up from 100, okay. Then just see this here, 100 to 1000 I have taken on Y axis, the frequency range. Then for T set, shop A is giving us up to 900, shop B is giving us up to 950. Mix C, shop A is giving us up to 700, shop B is giving us up to 800. Coffee maker, shop A is giving us at 600, shop B is giving us at 700. 
From the graph only you can tell it. I am not looking at the table. I am telling from the graph. The dinner set shop is giving us at 600, shop B is giving us at 500. Now I look at the table, I see that all my assumptions are correct. That's the use of bar graph. By just simply making two axes, one for the data, the items, and the other for the prices or the frequency. Okay? You can simply means get your respective prices or the quantity like that okay so that is all about bar graph and double bar graph and most importantly frequency so this prices number of students uh, using bicycle or walking every number of or quantity price these are frequencies always remember frequency should be on x or y axis and the uh, items the modes of transport or the items or the things that are being used or given those are your data they should be given on the x-axis and like that you have to draw the bar graphs most means beautiful representation of these type of quantity quantity type tables another type of method is also there okay that is called pie chart so in the next video get ready so we will involve circles for that calculation of angles many things will be there on that video so pie chart of the, all the sums what I will do on that video carefully because pie chart questions come in large numbers. It is important to know the concept clearly. Central angle you will learn about that. But first of all, I hope that bar graph, double bar graph and frequency distribution table is clear to you. Frequency distribution table, data, tally, frequency, data for items, tally, writing, the frequency using sticks. Frequency is the number of times each data has been used. Then bar graph already I told you. Oh no, class interval. Class interval is range of values. For every class interval, we are calculating the number of items in the class interval. You can't include the upper limit. But at the last class interval, which is your final data, you have to include the lower and upper limits. Okay. Then comes bar graph. Okay, x-axis for data, y-axis for frequency. Then for the data on x-axis, on the y-axis, keep drawing the vertical bar graph bar until you reach the required frequency. Double bar graph, same as that, just involving two frequencies simultaneously for the respective data. That's it for data handling part two. And means expansion of part one, you can say, because my pen was not supporting me in that video. So that's it from this video. So if you found bar graph, double bar graph and frequency distribution from part 2 of data handling for class 8. Very informative and helpful. All the sums and concepts were very clear to you. Leave a like and share and subscribe my channel. It motivates me to make better videos for my little friends on these interesting topics. Get ready for pie charts video in the upcoming session of class 8 coming on two days after two days so get ready for that till then take care and goodbye and new year is by the door so be ready to welcome that with your beautiful plans thank you